Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, this time we are gonna talk about how to uh, texture a sphere and basically how to take a normal photograph and kind of convert it into uh, a lat long texture that we can basically wrap around and it works for any camera angle. Uh, so this is really good for, you know, if you have scenes that have like a large skybox around in the distant uh, area and you wanna fly a camera through the sphere. So if you're doing like a jet flying, uh, or maybe a ship flying in space or something like that. Um, this technique is gonna work um, for those kind of scenes and basically any scene that has like a sky and you wanna see uh, different angles in the same shot. Um, and this technique can also be used for, you know, getting uh, textures out into different software. So if you're doing like a, a VR game or something like that, like uh, I have an example here I'll show at the end of the video, which is basically just taking uh, some nebulas that were kind of just released um, as a pack. So there's a bunch of the nebula textures that um, you can find um, on Compositing Academy. Um, and basically how I'm using these for a, a VR environment and how this technique actually applies into that sort of realm as well. Um, so basically what we're gonna look at first is just a picture uh, from Unsplash here and we have this sky. And if we wanted to apply this onto a sphere directly, um, you know, this is the problem that you're gonna immediately see. So if we have the picture, we plug it in, we give it an alpha here, so we shuffle in an alpha, we plug it into a sphere, and we go in 3D. Uh, immediately, you're gonna see uh, a few problems, and that is we have a seam, and that's very easy to fix, uh, but we also have this pole. Um, and so basically, if you guys are familiar with like, um, if you've ever seen a texture of like earth, like an earth texture or earth cloud map texture, uh, these are called uh, lat long textures. And these textures basically have um, some kind of warping near the top, which allows it to be wrapped around the sphere properly. And if you don't have that kind of warping, uh, that intentional warping that's kind of around the top of the picture, uh, it doesn't wrap around a sphere properly. And so 360 cameras will automatically give you this. Um, but if you're working with like a picture that's 180 degrees or even just, you know, not even 180 degrees, but just facing one direction, uh, we need to actually add that. So um, this is useful for like matte painting and stuff like that. So if we look at an example, I'm gonna show you two different methods here of how you can do this. Uh, I prefer this second method, um, but I'm gonna show this one first because it'll just kind of make things familiar with uh, the approach that we're taking on these. Um, so essentially what we have is a picture and we have this custom node. Uh, we have a few nodes here. Uh, I'll probably drop the script in. You can download it and play around to see if you can uh, figure it out. But we have two custom nodes, which is polar distort and offset. And these are really nice, especially offset for this. Um, we also have spherical transform, which is, you know, has a few more controls than polar distort. But uh, sometimes, you know, I don't like to use this node because uh, just a little bit longer of a process. And whereas this gives kind of the same result. Um, but it's there in case you're working in a studio and maybe you don't have the, the access to custom uh, tools off Nukipedia. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But we have the picture. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking the polar sort and we're converting it uh, from rectangular to polar. Uh, and essentially is, what this is doing is just kind of wrapping this on like a pseudo uh, sphere. And you can see we have the same problem that we saw on our 3D sphere. And we have this kind of pole uh, on, on the top here. And what we can do uh, is pretty simple. We just take uh, the normal picture, like the, the original starting picture we have here, and I'll just disable the transform. And what we're doing is we're just taking a roto shape in the center, and we're just uh, mixing the original image with the uh, polar distorted image. So we get something like this, where we're just patching in the center. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking a transform and scaling up the clouds, uh, moving the original picture, find maybe a good position to kind of blend the two images. And then what we do is we just basically polar distort it back. And if we polar distort it back, uh, you'll see that uh, this sort of top area, if we go here, you'll see that it's actually stretching and kind of wrapping around the top. And that's actually what you do want. Um, the problem with polar distort, this kind of custom node, it doesn't work great with uh, formats that are not square. Uh, so that means you're gonna have to do a lot of like reformat to square and then do this. Um, and that's not the greatest for like filtering and stuff like that. So uh, for example, uh, this is kind of a better way to do it. So usually what I'll do is I'll just do a polar distort, I'll mix the texture, convert it back and make sure it works. But then what you wanna do is basically reorganize these nodes so that you're not uh, warping the entire original picture. Uh, you know, So we can actually reorganize those nodes in a more efficient way here. And that will basically avoid uh, that problem. So essentially what we do is we just copy these nodes. So I copy, I'll just kind of recreate it here. You just copy these two. We copy the roto 
that we use in the kind of the key mix here. We pre-multiply it so that it'll uh, multiply and then we just have the patch basically. Uh, and then we can crop it. You need to put a crop before the puller to sort for it to kind of work properly. And after that, we can just put the puller to sort back on and you'll see that it's kind of wrapping uh, around the top there. And all we do is we just merge that picture over the original picture. And you'll see that we have that warped uh, top and we're not really affecting the rest of the image. We didn't have to reformat the square or anything like that. Uh, and we kind of avoid uh, blurring our picture too much because if you do it, all those steps, it kind of blurs your picture. So that's the easier way to do it. Preview it doing this method and then just your final method, you just kind of reorganize your nodes in this sort of way. Uh, another way to preview this to make sure it's working is to use a spherical transform node. Um, so if you put a spherical transform node at the end here and we plug it in, I'll just do a new one. And we want to say uh, lat long to uh, rectilinear. So we can say, so we can see the input is a lat long, which is what we're trying to create. But we want to put, output this rectilinear. So we, we switch that. And what this basically gives you is like you're kind of sitting inside your sphere and you don't have to do a sphere, a scan line render, and a camera, and a bunch of nodes and see if it looks good. We can just use this node right here. And basically, uh, this focal length is kind of like your camera. So imagine there's a camera sitting inside of the sphere. So if you reduce the focal length, make it a bit wider, uh, we can kind of see what's happening here. So if you read here, it says control alt left mouse drag in the viewer. So if we have our overlay on by hitting Q and pointing over, and we do that, so control alt left click, and then I start to drag around in the viewer. We can actually rotate the camera and look around to see if that sky is looking how we want it. And so if there's not enough texture resolution there, uh, you know, we can play around with our original texture. We can scale it and stuff like that. But it's a really easy way to just get a sense of the uh, 3D effect that we have here. And so that's basically the, the, the quick concept around how to get that. Now, the seam uh, is pretty simple to fix. We can see a seam here. Uh, and that's a very simple uh, fix to do. So we can go uh, basically to... Uh, this sort of uh, image here and all we want to do is an offset and then we can just uh, add a number here so we say 200 or something like that we just increase that number and then we can uh, basically just roto paint that, that seam out so we would just go here to roto paint uh, and then we would just kind of uh, make that a seamless image so we just go here set the opacity low set the hardness low and then we can just kind of quickly uh, blend those two images together and, and I'll just kind of do a rough job here uh, since this is just kind of a quick demonstration. So you see, we can hide that seam. And if we go back to the, the spherical transform uh, and disable and enable, uh, we should be able to see that that seam has kind of uh, been been erased. So uh, that's kind of the quick idea, not to spend too long on the, the seam there. Um, and we'll just kind of move on here. So this is the same technique down here. It's just using a spherical transform. Uh, this is why I kind of put it down here as an alternative. Uh, it's not my favorite way of doing it because uh, there's just a lot of settings you have to memorize and um, probably the best thing to do would just be to like save the settings in these two and save these as like a, as a you know, like a tool set. So you can save your tool set so you don't have to remember. But there are a few ways to do it here. So I'll just explain it real quick before we go on to this method, which I think is the fastest and easiest. Uh, so we have spherical transform and essentially what you want to do in spherical transform is you switch it from lat long to projection fisheye and you can kind of play with the focal length here as well uh, which will kind of change the way that this scales so if I do it from scratch here plug it in we'll switch it to fisheye like this and you can play with these settings here so if you play with the sensor size if you increase this number here, it'll basically kind of shrink it down. Uh, and you'll see it's still not giving us a circle that we need. So you can increase or sorry, decrease the focal length to a wider focal length. And you'll see that we now have like our entire sphere in here. Uh, so the sensor size will kind of play with the format. Uh, and usually you just want to keep it kind of square uh, and getting it, getting it all seen there. So something like this is probably fine. You know, we can try to maybe maximize our resolution, just keep the circle going just to, directly to the edge. And so now the trick here is um, we see that our pole is not facing us. So it's not easy to paint it out with an image that looks like this. So really what you want to do is you want to take the pan uh, tilt roll. We want to rotate this by 90 degrees. So you see we're getting a very basically similar result to uh, the polar distort, um, except it's kind of in a square format. And it's basically the same idea after that, just patching a picture, take this picture, uh, key mix it in. And essentially after that, um, 
we want to go to the spherical transform at the end, and we just want to invert those two. So we, instead of saying the projection uh, as lat long, uh, we're saying the projection is fisheye, and we're cutting, converting it back into lat long, which gives us this result back, and we're good to go. We have uh, basically an image that kind of works. Now, of course, we didn't do it for the bottom half of the image, and you can do it if you want, because we're gonna have the seam and those kind of problems. I'm just doing a quick demonstration of how you can get that proper kind of stretching near the top of the frame. So I prefer this way. It's very, very simple. Uh, we also have uh, this. So it's a, it's a similar concept. We have the original image. Uh, we, uh, I think I painted out the bird here. I think there's like a bird in this <laughs> picture, but uh, uh, all we can do here is we, uh, we polar distort it. And now all we do is just mix the top of this picture with the original. So here's the original picture uh, mixed in. So I use the roto shape just to mix those two together. And essentially what that does is all the same work that we had to do with these nodes, but we can do it just in a different way. And we have that proper stretching. And if we wrap this onto a sphere, it, it already works. So uh, much easier, much less nodes. You don't have to think about too much and keeping it simple, which I like. So uh, after that, we can paint out our seam. So we offset it. We wrote a paint out the seam. We're good to go. Uh, and then I think what I did here is I kind of uh, flipped the image and I did the same thing. So I kind of mirrored it, offset it again to make sure there's no seams, uh, just paint out the seams and then kind of key mix that back on. So now we have this like cloud image that, you know, maybe if we're flying really high in the sky, uh, maybe you could put some ocean down here instead. It would make more sense, but it's just a demonstration. Um, so make sure there's no seams in there and we can preview it again using our spherical transform. So again, uh, make sure we go lat long to rectilinear and now we have our controls if we turn our overlay on with Q uh, We can do control alt left mouse click and we can kind of spin around here and just make sure our texture is good Does it work from all the angles and stuff like that? So I'm kind of just spinning around randomly here and if you see some te some uh, Textures that maybe are a little bit too stretched. That's where you want to go in and you want to play with your resolution so um, if, if it is the case that things are a little bit too big or too stretched um, that's where you're going to have to start shrinking your images down and kind of uh, maybe adding more images. Um, so the resolution and the size of things is still something you're going to have to play with uh, visually at the end result, you know. Uh, so I'll explain that a little bit more in uh, another example coming up here with a kind of space example. But again, if we preview this in 3D, uh, it is kind of working. The, the technique is kind of working here. We have a, a sphere with no seams, uh, no poles and stuff like that. So that's uh, closer to the result that we would probably need. Um, so we have another example down here. This is uh, something I was doing for like a VR environment. Um, I have this uh, render here. Uh, this is a render, uh, just a very basic CG environment for, for some kind of VR stuff that I'm doing. Um, and basically uh, this is rendered out from a 360 degree, degree camera in CG. So you can get these renders out very easily if you're familiar with any uh, 3D package. You just Google, how do I get a 360 camera uh, in whatever software. And so I rendered this out and basically I'm using the same technique uh, to kind of uh, do this sort of space nebula and kind of uh, put it behind these kind of windows. So this is gonna be kind of like a glass dome uh, in space kind of thing. And so it's a really good way to kind of design uh, things for a 360 degree environment um, because we can easily see um, the layout of the, the CG scene as well as um, our sky that we're kind of matte painting. And so uh, again, if we have our, our 3D render with 360 degrees, as well as our, our proper lat long with the stretching, of course, if it's not stretching at the top, you know something's wrong. You want the stretching uh, near the poles. That, that's kind of telling you that it's correct. And if we have something like that, we can do a spherical transform at the end. And this is a low resolution CG render, so you can see it's kind of blurry there. Uh, it's not the highest quality, just for the example. But again, we have our spherical transform. We can do our little trick here and rotate around and uh, give it a second here, give it a second to cache, uh, and we should be able to rotate around kind of uh, in real time. And we can get a sense for how that uh, 360 degree environment is gonna look. So it's kind of a, a finicky, the controls, in terms of, yeah, kind of spinning around here. Um, not exactly the best, so you can play with these numbers on the side. So I could say uh, just an X, I could just increase that number. I could just use my arrow keys up. Uh, spin around and just see if the lighting is working and all these kind of things. So we have like a light source from a galaxy. We have our light direction and CG. And these are the kind of things I'm going to be paying attention to for doing some kind of 360 degree environment. You know, is that matte painting lining up uh, and those kind of things. So that's about it. Um, basically how to, you know, get images looking like this. Um, 
very, very useful, especially, you know, if you have a whole bunch of pictures that you're map painting with, like these, these are the nebulas. Uh, you can find these in the description if you guys uh, need any textures like this, but um, it's pretty awesome, uh, pretty awesome technique. And, you know, you can stack different uh, pictures as well, like shrink them down. And, uh, you know, if you need more detail in certain spots, you know, something I've seen a lot uh, specifically in like VR environments is they don't have a good sense of scale, uh, meaning like sometimes the stars look too big. Um, and that's kind of a map painting thing. That's more of an artistic uh, thing you need to pay attention to uh, rather than like this is a technical tutorial. But uh, just keep that in mind if you're doing any kind of map painting, you know, pay attention to stuff like this where it doesn't look good, where you have stars that are too big. The, the sense of scale doesn't make sense. Those are things that you kind of want to improve there and, and pay attention to. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Hit like if you guys found it useful. And that's about it.